Howdy folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and welcome to this video review of the 2022 Specialized Stump Jumper. To celebrate its 40th anniversary, the Stump Jumper was completely redesigned last year alongside the longer travel Stump Jumper Evo. We tested both of those bikes and while I was impressed with the low weight and the superb handling of the Stump Jumper Pro, I was curious how that performance would translate to the cheaper models. And here we have the cheapest carbon model in the lineup. This is the Stump Jumper Comp. Now it costs nearly half the price of the Pro, but does it deliver half the performance. The Stump Jumper is specialised lightweight mid-travel trail bike. It sits in between the 110mm travel Epic Evo and the 150mm travel Stump Jumper Evo. The regular Stump Jumper splits the difference. It's got 130mm travel on the back and that's paired to a 140mm travel fork. It's built around 29 inch wheels, though there is a brand new option to run it as a mullet setup. More on that in a bit. The Stump Jumper is available in both alloy and carbon frame options. The carbon bikes utilize a FACT 11M carbon frame, which features a one-piece swing arm that relies on flex through the seat stay rather than using a traditional pivot near the dropout. They also feature SWAT storage in the down tube, and the bike comes included with a dry bag for your spares, plus a bottle cage and the neat EMT tool that sits beneath it. The SWAT system is a brilliant feature, and I love that it meant I could go packless on most of my rides. There's plenty of other practical details on this frame, including generous protection and guided internal cable routing in order to keep it quiet on the trail. There's a threaded bottom bracket and standard boost hub spacing with a regular 52mm chain line. Also, while many brands typically only offer three or four frame sizes, the Stump Jumper is available in six. At 175 centimeters tall, I've been testing the S3 frame size, which is essentially a medium. It features a generous 450 millimeter reach, and that's paired to a 65 degree head angle and a 76 degree effective seat tube angle. The back end is nice and short with a 432 millimeter rear center. However, the larger S5 and S6 frame sizes get a longer 442 millimeter rear center. There are five complete bikes in the Stump Jumper lineup, plus an S-Works frame set, which costs some $6,000 on its own. As mentioned before, this is the cheapest carbon model in the lineup. It is the 2022 Specialized Stump Jumper Comp. Current retail price on this is 7,200 Australian dollars. In terms of spec, we've got a Fox 34 Rhythm Fork and a custom tuned float DPS shock. There's a Shimano SLX group set, including four piston brakes with a 200 mil rotor up front. There's an X-Fusion dropper post and specialized finishing kit, including the Butcher T9 tire on the front and a Purgatory T7 on the back. Confirmed weight for our specialized Stump Jumper Comp test bike is 13. 8 kilos, which is pretty decent. Some of the parts are on the heavier side, including that 34 rhythm fork, which uses a cheaper air spring and a heavier chassis compared to the higher end 34 forks. As a result, it does come in heavier on the scales at 1.94 kilos. The stock wheel set is also kind of porky, weighing in a little bit over 2.2 kilos. The frame, however, is one of the lightest in its class. It's worth pointing out that the comp carbon frame is basically identical to the S-Works model. The only difference is the shock yoke, which is made of alloy instead of carbon. Even still, the claimed weight for this frame is just 2,280 grams, and that's including the rear shock, hardware, and through axle. And that is very light for a mid-travel trail bike. 
Given it had been over a year since I tested the Stump Jumper Pro, I was curious to see whether my positive impressions would be reaffirmed in this cheaper comp model. Despite being a kilo heavier, I'm happy to report that it still exudes the sprightly performance that we enjoyed so much about the Pro. For a start, the custom valve shock and the flex day suspension design are a great pairing. Even without the horse link, the suspension is still active without feeling wallowy. It's not quite as plush as the Trek Fuel EX or the Giant Trance X, and it doesn't have the floatiness of the longer travel Stump Jumper Evo, but it is still thoroughly effective on the trail. The enthusiastic suspension performance is nicely complemented by the lightweight carbon chassis, which offers fantastic compliance over rough terrain. This was something I noticed coming off the Canyon Spectral 125, which is a similar bike in terms of travel and geometry but features a more progressive suspension design and a much stiffer carbon frame that proved to be rather uncompromising and somewhat jarring on choppier trails. In comparison, the Stump Jumper is a much more comfortable bike. No doubt the alloy rims and the supple tire casings contribute to the overall compliance. The 2.3 inch tires are well suited to the Stump Jumper's intentions, offering a nice degree of damping without feeling floppy or cumbersome on tight single track. Mind you, the Stump Jumper is no noticeably slower rolling than last year's bike, and that's down to the aggressive butcher on the front, which features the new GUI T9 rubber compound. Personally, I think the increased rolling resistance is worth the trade-off though, with that front tire providing an outstanding level of grip in most conditions. Thankfully, the superb geometry of the Stump Jumper means you can fully exploit the grippy tires, powerful brakes, and active suspension performance. The long front end and slack head angle give you the confidence to push the Stump Jumper surprisingly hard on the descents, though the low bottom bracket and short rear end ensure it remains agile and easy to throw around. Indeed, cornering performance on this bike is fantastic. It doesn't quite have the same snap and release sensation that stiffer bikes offer when you're pummeling it into really high speed catch berms, but the compliant chassis does make it more adaptable on chunkier terrain. When cornering off camber or through turns that are dotted with baby head sized rocks, the Stump Jumper snakes its way through without knocking you offline. It's also an easy and fun bike to jump with, though given the Stump Jumper is willing to use all of its travel, occasionally I did slap full bottom out on harder landings. The impact isn't harsh though, and despite the stored energy and the carbon flex stays, there's minimal bucking on bigger hits thanks to the progressive rebound tune. While I found no need to, it is possible to change to a smaller or larger volume spacer inside the rear shock for those who want to tweak the progression rate. While the components on the Stump Jumper Comp have proven to be solid all round, and I've been impressed with the plush performance of the 34 Rhythm Fork, it did suffer from excessive bushing knock from the factory, which resulted in a clunking noise on bigger compressions. It's since been rebuilt under warranty and it is much better, though there is still some noise on bigger compressions, which may be down to the Rhythm's cheaper air spring. It's not really a big deal, but it does reinforce my opinion that a bike at this price point should really be coming with a higher end fork. As for the rear suspension, while the Stump Jumper is nice and active, it's also not the firmest bike under power, especially compared to the pert performance of a bike like the Pivot Trail 429. The flip side of the neutral suspension kinematics is that there's minimal feedback through the drivetrain. There's excellent traction on feature-rich single-track climbs, and it comfortably absorbs impacts when you're pedaling over rock gardens and root beds. There is visible shock movement while pedaling though, and it does tend to sink a little bit into its travel when you're heading uphill. Along with the short rear end and the slack head angle, the front wheel does require careful management to keep it from wandering offline on steeper gradients. With that in mind, you'll want to make use of the shock's compression lever to help improve stability on the climbs. Handily, the lever is within easy reach underneath the top tube, and it allows you to select between the open, medium, and firm settings. While the firm setting is nearly a full lockout, the medium setting is totally usable off-road. As well as boosting efficiency on long fire road sections, it helps to stabilize the shock and lift the ride height, which is useful on technical climbs where you can benefit from the additional ground clearance. The suspension still remains pretty active in that medium setting, with the digressive compression tune allowing the shock to break through this platform at higher shaft speeds so it can comfortably absorb medium to large sized impacts. 
It's surprisingly effective for riding across undulating single track, and indeed some folks might find themselves spending the majority of the time in that medium setting and only flipping into open as a full traction mode for rowdier descents. Speaking of rowdy descents, well, it has to be said that while the flex stay suspension design does a marvellous job in most circumstances, it's not quite as active under braking compared to a true four bar platform. Also, while I've gotten along really well with the compliant carbon chassis, I do think that bigger and more aggressive riders may find it to be a little too soft. For those big hitters who are chasing maximum plushness and support, I'd recommend looking at the longer travel Stump Jumper Evo as a more suitable option. Now up until recently, the Stump Jumper has been a dedicated 29 inch only platform. And that changes with the addition of a new aftermarket linkage, which is designed to allow you to run a 27.5 inch rear wheel on this bike while maintaining the existing geometry and suspension kinematics. And this mullet link is due to be available in Australia in the next few months, and I've got one here which I'm about to bolt onto our test bike. Given that most mullet bikes on the market are either heavy duty EMTBs or long travel enduro bikes, I'm curious to see what the mullet setup brings to the lightweight stump jumper. If you're curious too, make sure you stay tuned to the Flow website for more on our stump jumper wheel size experiment. I'll also mention that the full review of the 2022 Specialized Stump Jumper is now live over at flowmountainbike.com. Make sure you click that link in the video description below right now, and that will take you through to the full review, which has a load more info about my experience of testing this bike, including detail on suspension setup and comparisons with some of the other bikes we've recently reviewed. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Tooroo!